Hey guys, what's up? It's Lou here. Uh, I am uh, doing a video response for Dave uh, with his seven point uh, review style. Uh, Dave is a great friend of mine and I promise I'll do a video for whatever this is for. So I'm not going to say it. You better watch the entire video and I'll tell you what it's for. Uh, I have to do it quickly because I have to leave in 20 minutes. My bus is leaving. so. The knife I'm going to review is the Spider Gozabo, which was actually sent to me by Dave. So thank you very much once again for that, Dave. This used to be my grail knife. I wanted this knife more than anything else in the world <laughs> at the moment. Uh, I just wanted to have it. As, since the first day I saw it, or like two years ago, I thought this would be a great self-defense knife. It's from one of my favorite uh, designers, Lotsi Zabo, who is... Uh, like he specializes in reverse grip so let's let's go into the review and let's talk about the concept concept for this knife is pure tactical fighting knife um, that's it there's nothing else this is not a utility knife you just you can't just bring this out and open a pack you can but it's it's not meant for that um, but it's meant for fighting they made it for fighting, even though I don't think this knife is perfect for that. It needs a lot, a lot of improvement. And these are the uh, the most, the area, areas where, which need more improvement. First of all, finger guard. There's no finger guard here. You can slide up like nothing. Like nothing. I mean, you can go like that and very easily. Uh, compared to other knives like the recoil one, which I don't know where it is, or Dave's Arbiter. Just give me a second. Here's Dave's Arbiter. As you can see here, the choil, you can't go up or back with this knife. It's just so secure. And this is pure tactical knife because um, I heard the story of this guy the police officer that uh, was in a tactical situation and he was trying to stab a, a bad guy with a spider co police stainless steel and he hit something hard on his body and he went all the way up and slit his uh, hand right open and for me as well I was in a kind of a fight somebody attacked me with a knife it was an old school Italian stiletto those cheapo things uh, I, I was stabbed and it hit my bone and the lock failed and um, he cut his, his hand so that, that's what I'm talking about uh, for this one this has a very strong lock they reinforced it now uh, they've been working on this for a very long time I've been talking to Sal Glesser and he told me that um, they had issues with the self close mechanism because this has a spring inside um, and that's another another downside because for being a fighting knife and a tactical knife, you're very slow to deploy. It needs to break in. It needs a break in period where it gets a little bit easier, but it's not like a paramilitary tool or anything like that. So it's slow to deploy. It's not secure. This material is complete crap. This is some some kind of carbon fiber, and G10 mix. I don't know. But it's very very slippery. So they made it pretty and not functional, which is unusual for spider go i don't know why i hope they want to take that road um as for forward grip you can grip it like here and you have a lot of reach which is very good um you have to be careful not to slide up the it has a it has some belly it has great penetration power losses elbow style but this is meant for reverse grip in my opinion this is for uh blocking your opponent and then hooking them up and uh, closing in on them and it's very good in that aspect uh, but there is a downside and it's this part of the handle sticking up a lot so if you want to go and slash at someone you might actually end up hitting them first with this part so that's a bad thing about it or actually your opponent can actually go and grab you your knife right away and since the finger choil is not that great he can actually pull it out of your hand and cut you uh, while you slide up so it's uh, it needs it needs some work I don't know how they would do this with this a big blade they need a, a big handle but I don't know 
uh, that's a downside really because you can't hold a knife in reverse grip like this you would have to have like iron iron wrist to do that because you see I can push it back easily from here but if I grab it here it's very hard to push it back because of the angle and this is how you grip it this is how you usually block in reverse grip because reverse grip is for defense mainly you block hook slash uh, stab uh, god forbid I hope nobody has to use them but we just we just want the security right um, so that's for concepts uh, I guess uh, it's a good knife it's it's very thick as well so it's it feels good in the hand uh, it's very sharp um, it's a good fighting knife but it has a lot of room for improvement in my opinion uh, I'm when it comes to tactical knives I'm never expecting a lot from Spyderco Spyderco is not a tactical knife company in my opinion is nowhere in nowhere um, even close to companies like Cold Steel for example uh, Spyderco is the best utility knife company in my opinion Cold Steel is the best tactical knife company I just wish they would use better steel but great knife um, I don't know about the price and there's a lot of room for improvement construction oh this is overbuilt like really this the lock is very strong it has a spring inside if you open it up there's like freaking like a clock in there this it's very hard to maintain uh, I heard that there's a spring and you need a special screw to to put it back together or something I don't know I didn't I didn't take it apart I just put some blue loop over here and all around the springs and everything and it's a little bit smoother um, as uh, for this is a Taiwan made Spyderco so the edges are a little bit sharp and if you look inside at the liners you can see they are very very rough they are very rough grind lines which I didn't expect from Taiwan um, this material I was talking to Michael John Rich, they call him John Rich, and I told him that I was afraid that this would fall down if you drop the knife these would poke out and they actually do he said they uh, that won't happen but I can confirm it there is some of these wires poking out especially if you if you end up throwing this knife on some uh, wool sweater or something rubbing it against they will stick up like nothing um, I don't like this material at all it's just cheap in my opinion it's G10 and some kind of carbon fiber and this it just makes the knife look childish so uh, I don't, what did I give it for for concept I give it uh, two and a half for construction I give it one and a half and for performance let me get a piece of wood here for what it is this is a tactical knife and it will definitely cut into meat but it does pretty well in wood as well this is uh, bass wood so it cuts pretty bad pretty pretty well uh, for that but I don't think this is meant for that like I told you uh, so performance is okay for what it's meant for I think it would be great self-defense knife um, uh, if you be but you have to be careful with it not to hit something hard not to stab a wall or something so would I carry it as my primary self-defense knife no I'm I thought this would uh, kick the cold steel recon one out of my pocket, but it didn't I still carry it around but not as much as I carry with the recon one for uh, as far as performance I give it a two and a half Now deployment I told you already this knife is very hard to uh, Take out you have to give it a wrist flick uh, closing it you can not close it like the like the paramilitary tee. you can but you have to push a lot to give it a, a lot of wrist um, uh, normal spidey hole flick middle finger flick forget about it you can in reverse grip you can do this but you have to go hard and you have to go like this down see um, 
I haven't tried it with uh, the zip tie wave thing. Um, I don't know. Maybe it will work. Uh, Dave has a video where he has a lot of deployment methods. I don't have time to do that right now. But it's okay. But this spring, I don't like it at all. They could have put a detent there. I mean, I don't know. You could. Let me try it like this. No. No, no way. So it's flicking it like this or or in reverse grip down so deployment uh, gets a low one for me I think a tactical knife should have many many other deployment ways uh, so not very good at that um, okay so we said it uh, design is basically like the like the in the first one it's a pure tactical knife it's not a utility knife I think it would ho hold up well in um, let's make it clear tactical in a way like it's a fighting knife and it's a survival knife as well this is a strong knife it's very overbuilt it has no blade play uh, I've batoned a little bit with it no blade play at all I, I've seen Dave baton with it so uh, the design overall as in a tactical knife is I don't know I'll give it a two maybe it could they could improve it like I said with those uh, choils and better handle material materials um what was the third one i don't have enough time to go through all uh performance overall performance uh i guess it's the same like i said first this would perform well in the tactical situation it could be used as a self defense knife easily um uh, it could be improved like i said um uh, you could use it in many different ways you can use it to in forward grip it's a very good slasher in my opinion it's a very good stabber especially you would if you go up with this uh, with this Persian style blade uh, it's good in reverse grip um, and you do need to practice a lot for that though um, what else? I don't know what to say. Uh, overall performance, I don't know, I'll give it a 2. And final impressions. Final impressions is a good knife, a little bit overpriced. Uh, could be better quality control. I've, I've had I've had other uh, Spyderco Taiwan products like the Zulu. Well, actually the, the Zulu is the only one that I have. And the Zulu is uh, better quality, better build than this. Um, it is centered, it doesn't have any play, for some reason it it seems like it's with all of them, they rub a little bit against the liner, I don't know if you can hear it, if you push like that, but that doesn't bother me, I, I'm going to keep this knife, because I like it and it was a gift and it has sentimental value to me, um, so that's the final impression, impressions, uh, if you're not worried about finger choils, if you are like Gapco for example, <laughs> wants to use a knife for uh, just uh, cutting uh, cardboard and stuff and wood this is not for you this is a pure tactical fighting knife um, it's a great collectible knife uh, it has a great pocket clip uh, it sticks I wish it was a little bit higher if they put it a little bit higher here uh, it would be better it would sit a little bit better in the pocket uh, they could make it a little bit thinner in my opinion uh, but yeah, I like the knife, it has room for improvement and I will go to the Spyderco forums and actually start a thread and with uh, what I think uh, could make this knife better. So this was a video response for Dave's contest and Dave is giving away a Hinderer XM18 guys. So whoever made it this far, make a video response. Uh, because he is giving away a Pinder XM18. I don't know any people who are more generous than Dave. Not in the YouTube community, not. Uh, in my entire life, I've never met anybody who is more generous. So uh, I would really like to get that XM18 and I would, uh, I would keep it, I would test it because I've never had a good frame lock. Uh, the only titanium frame lock that I had is a Boker Subcom and it's a piece of crap. So I would really like to test a good frame lock. So if I win it, I will definitely make a video, a review, test it hard, use it, um, and 
That's about it. So Dave, thanks for everything, man. Thanks for a great contest. Thanks for generosity and God bless. Take care. Peace.